Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to our read aloud of Charlotte's Web. Yesterday, or not yesterday, on Tuesday, two days ago, we read chapter 10, which was part of the rising action of our plot. As a reminder, the stages of our plot are exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and then the resolution at the end. In the rising action is where we get lots of clues about our central conflict or the big problem in our story. Right now, we know that our problem is that Wilbur wants to stay alive, but he can't because Mr. Zuckerman is planning on killing him. We do know a little bit about some attempts to resolve that conflict. We know that Charlotte, the spider, is trying to somehow trick the humans to keep Wilbur alive. But as of right now, we're not sure how she plans on doing that. So let's see if we get some sneak peeks of that in chapter 11. As we are reading chapter 11, keep thinking about what part of the plot you think we are in. Are we still in the rising action or are we going to get to that climax, to the moment when we think there is no possible solution and the excitement is all built up? Or are we going to pass the climax and get to the falling action, hear a resolution and start to see our story wrap up a little bit? Keep an ear out for that as we read chapter 11, The Miracle. The next day was foggy. Everything on the farm was dripping wet. The grass looked like a magic carpet. The asparagus patch looked like a silver forest. I'm already going to stop because guess what I heard? I heard some figurative language. We talked about figurative language so much in our poetry unit, but as you've seen throughout Charlotte's Web, lots and lots of authors use figurative language in books as well. So what type of figurative language did we just hear? Was it personification? similes, or alliteration. Listen one more time to the beginning of this chapter. The next day was foggy. Everything on the farm was dripping wet. The grass looked like a magic carpet. The asparagus patch looked like a silver forest. All right, shout it out. Which type of figurative language did you think it was? Absolutely, we heard similes. We heard the author comparing things using the word like. They said the asparagus patch looked like a silver forest, so comparing asparagus, a vegetable, with a silver forest, and the grass looked like a magic carpet, so comparing the grass to a magic carpet. Excellent ears for that figurative language. Let's keep going. On foggy mornings, Charlotte's web was truly a thing of beauty. This morning, each thin strand was decorated with dozens of tiny beads of water. The web glistened in the light and made a pattern of loveliness and mystery, like a delicate veil. Did you hear the simile in there? Even Lurvy, who wasn't particularly interested in beauty, noticed the web when he came with the pig's breakfast. He noted how clearly it showed up, and he noticed how big and carefully it was built. And then he took another look and he saw something that made him set his pail down. There, in the center of the web, neatly woven in block letters, was a message. It said, Some Pig. Lurvy felt weak. He brushed his hands across his eyes and stared harder at Charlotte's web. I'm seeing things, he whispered. He dropped to his knees and uttered a short prayer. Then, forgetting all about Wilbur's breakfast, he walked back to the house and called Mr. Zuckerman. I think you'd better come down to the pig pen, he said. What's the trouble? asked Mr. Zuckerman. Anything wrong with the pig? N -n -n not exactly, said Lurvy. Come and see for yourself. Oh my goodness, did any of you predict that would be Charlotte's solution? That she was going to write a message in her web to try and trick the people? If you predicted that, awesome job predicting because I would not have guessed that. Let's see what happens. The two men walked silently down to Wilbur's yard. Lurvy pointed to the spider's web. Do you see what I see? Zuckerman stared at the writing on the web. Then he murmured the words, some pig. Then he looked at Lurvy. 
Then they both began to tremble. Charlotte, sleepy after her night's exertions, smiled as she watched. Wilbur came and stood directly under the web. Some pig, muttered Lurvy in a low voice. Some pig, whispered Mr. Zuckerman. They stared and stared for a long time at Wilbur. Then they stared at Charlotte. You don't suppose that spider, began Mr. Zuckerman, but he shook his head and didn't finish the sentence. Instead, he walked solemnly back up to the house and spoke to his wife. Edith, something has happened, he said in a weak voice. He went into the living room and sat down and Mrs. Zuckerman followed. I've got something to tell you, Edith, he said. You better sit down. Mrs. Zuckerman sank into a chair. She looked pale and frightened. Edith, he said, trying to keep his voice steady, I think you had best be told that we have a very unusual pig. A look of complete bewilderment came over Mrs. Zuckerman's face. Homer Zuckerman, what in the world are you talking about? She said. This is a very serious thing, Edith, he replied. Our pig is completely out of the ordinary. What's unusual about the pig? Asked Mrs. Zuckerman, who was beginning to recover from her scare. Well, I don't really know yet, said Mr. Zuckerman, but we have received a sign, Edith, a mysterious sign. A miracle has happened on this farm. There was a large spider's web in the doorway of the barn cellar, right over the pig pen. And when Lurvy went to feed the pig this morning, he noticed the web because it was foggy. And you know how a spider's web looks very distinct in a fog. And right sprang in the middle of the web, there were the words, some pig. The words were woven right into the web. They, they were actually part of the web, Edith. I know, because I have been down there and seen them. It says some pig just as clear as clear can be. There can be no mistake about it. A miracle has happened and a sign has occurred here on earth, right on our farm, and we have no ordinary pig. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, it seems to me you're a little off. It seems to me we have no ordinary spider. Oh no, said Zuckerman, it's the pig that's unusual. It says so, right there in the middle of the web. Maybe so, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Just the same, I intend to have a look at that spider. It's just a common gray spider, said Zuckerman. They got up and together they walked down to Wilbur's yard. You see, Edith, it's just a common gray spider. Wilbur was pleased to receive so much attention. Lurvy was still standing there and Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman, all three, stood for about an hour reading the words on the web over and over and watching Wilbur. Charlotte was delighted with the way her trick was working. She sat without moving a muscle and listened to the conversation of the people. When a small fly blur blundered into the web just beyond the word pig, Charlotte dropped quickly down, rolled the fly up, and carried it out of the way. After a while, the fog lifted. The web dried off and the words didn't show up so plainly. The Zuckermans and Lurvy walked back to the house. Just before they left the pig pen, Mr. Zuckerman took one last look at Wilbur. You know, he said in an important voice, I've thought all along that that pig of ours was an extra good one. He's a solid pig. That pig is as solid as they come. You notice how solid he is around the shoulders, Lurvy? Sure, sure I do, said Lurvy. I've always noticed that pig. He is quite a pig. He's long and he's smooth, said Zuckerman. That's right, agreed Lurvy. He's as smooth as they come. He's so pig. Let's pause right here, my friends, and think about what just happened. Let's review the skill of retelling or summarizing, meaning to tell the most important parts again in your own words. So pause the video right here to retell what just happened with Charlotte's trick on the Zuckermans. 
Let's have the partner with the longer hair share their retelling or summary first. Hit pause to retell and then hit play when you're ready. Excellent, excellent work. As a reminder, when you're summarizing, you need to make sure that you are pulling out those most important details. It really should only be about two or three sentences to summarize something like what we just read. You're not retelling the entire thing sentence by sentence, but instead pulling out those most important ideas and re-saying them in your own words so that somebody else could remember what happened in the story. Let's keep going. When Mr. Zuckerman got back to the house, he took off his work clothes and put on his best suit. Then he got into his car and drove to the minister's house. He stayed for an hour and explained to the minister that a miracle had happened on the farm. So far, said Zuckerman, only four people on earth know about this miracle. Myself, my wife Edith, my hired man Lurvy, and you. Don't tell anybody else, said the minister. We don't know what it means yet. But perhaps, if I give thought to it, I can explain it in my sermon next Sunday. There can be no doubt that you have a most unusual pig. I intend to speak about it in my sermon and point out the fact that this community has been visited by a wondrous animal. By the way, does the pig have a name? Why, yes, said Mr. Zuckerman. My little niece calls him Wilbur. She's a rather queer child full of notions. She raised the pig on a bottle, and I thought, and I bought him from her when he was a month old. He shook hands with the minister and left. Secrets are hard to keep. Long before Sunday came, the news spread all over the county. Everybody knew that a sign had appeared in a spider's web on the Zuckerman's place. Everybody knew that the Zuckerman's had a wondrous pig. People came from miles around to look at Wilbur and to read the words on Charlotte's web. The Zuckerman's driveway was full of cars and trucks from morning till night. Fords and Chevys and Buick Roadmasters and GMC pickups and Plymouths and Packards and Oldsmobiles with rocket engines and Jeep station wagons and Pontiacs. The news of the wonderful pig spread clear up into the hills and farmers came rattling down in buggies and buckboards to stand hour after hour at Wilbur's pen, admiring the, admiring the miraculous animal. All said they had never seen such a pig before in their lives. When Fern told her mother that Avery had tried to hit the Zuckerman spider with a stick, Mrs. Arabelle was so shocked that she sent Avery to bed without any supper as punishment. In the days that followed, Mr. Zuckerman was so busy entertaining visitors that he neglected his farm work. He wore his good clothes all the time now, got right into them when he got up in the morning. Mrs. Zuckerman prepared special meals for Wilbur. Lurvy shaved and got a haircut, and his principal farm duty was to feed the pig while people looked on. Mr. Zuckerman ordered Lurvy to increase Wilbur's feedings from three meals a day to four meals a day. The Zuckermans were so busy with visitors, they forgot about other things on the farm. The blackberries got ripe, and Mrs. Zuckerman failed to, put any, failed to put up any blackberry jam. The corn needed hoeing, and Lurvy didn't find time to hoe it. On Sunday, the church was full. The minister explained the miracle. He said that the words on the spider's web proved that human beings must be always on the watch for the coming of wonders. All in all, the Zuckerman's pig pen was the center of attraction. Fern was happy, for she felt that Charlotte's trick was working and that Wilbur's life would be saved. But she found that the barn was not nearly as pleasant. Too many people. She liked it better when she could be all alone with her friends, the animals. And that right there is the end of chapter 11. Oh my goodness, what an exciting chapter that we had right there. Let's think about our plot and where in the plot we are. Where do you think we are in the plot? Are we still in the rising action or have we reached the climax or gotten to the falling action? Pause the video here to talk to your partner about where in the plot you think we are and why. Make sure to use evidence from the text to explain why you think we are in that part of the plot. This time, let's have the partner 
whose birthday is coming up next. Share their ideas first and then hit play when you're ready. So this might actually be a little bit tricky to figure out exactly where in the plot we are. So we just heard something that sounds like an awesome solution for Wilbur's problem. And we know that the solution happens when we get to that falling action. That's where we get the resolution starting to happen and things are starting to wrap themselves up. Our problem is getting solved. However, I'm noticing that we still have quite a lot of our book left, which makes me think that we probably are still going to have some problems happening and that this solution won't be as perfect as it's making it sound right now. So I have a feeling that we are actually still in our rising action and that pretty soon as we're about halfway through the book, we will start to figure out this real way to wrap up the problem and to see what other problems could come from Charlotte trying to spell out messages in her web to save Wilbur's life. So I hope you enjoyed this chapter today and I hope you will come back next week to join me as we continue reading Charlotte's Web and keep talking about the plot. Have an awesome rest of your day, my friends, and I'll see you very soon. Bye!